For mine, I used these pipe cleaners, chenille stems, cure pipes, they're from Crafters Square, got these at the dollar store. You get assorted colors, 12 inch, 30 and a half centimeter, and I used four of the blue pipe cleaners and then two of them for each of the dragon's wings. Now you should have two triangular pieces completed for the ear. You're going to take your tapestry needle, you're going to put it on the long end that you left for sewing. If you don't have the long end, then just take the same colored yarn as the main portion of your ear, and you're going to take and place it. Make sure that you have the right side showing towards the outside, and then the wrong side facing in on your dragon. And what you're going to do is you could see how I've positioned this is upside down mine is upside down there's the nostril right here so it's upside down I've placed the ear onto the back of the head along the triangle small triangle and you're gonna sew right up close to the triangle make sure that you position it so that you can sew it to the head. You don't want to sew it to a little triangle, you want to sew it to the head just along this bottom portion right there. Then you're going to take your tapestry needle with the same colored yarn as the small triangle and then you're just going to sew right along the base because you still want the small triangle to flap up. So you're just going to come from behind sewing the ear, the back ear, to the small triangle. Make sure you leave enough yarn on the back for tying a knot and burying your loose yarn in. And then you just sew right across the bottom. Then do the exact same thing on the opposite side. This is how mine looks after sewing both of the ears in place. For the neck piece, you're going to make it exactly the same way as you did for the body, except for the neck piece, instead of stopping at one single crochet into 10 stitches and two single crochet into the 11th, you're going to keep increasing until you get to one single crochet into 12 stitches and then two single crochet into the 13th stitch. And you will have a total of 84 stitches when you're done. When you're finished, with your last stitch and you're back to the yarn marker, then you're going to take and fold your work in half so that the wrong sides are together. Then you're going to take and slip stitch into that opposite stitch. So just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook so you slip stitched the work in half. You can go ahead and take out your yarn marker and now you're going to start to work in rounds. So you're going to go into the first stitch and make one single crochet into every stitch until you get back to where you started. Now I'm back to where I started, where I made the slip stitch. So I'm just going to keep working in rounds. And this is where you can take and place a yarn marker to help you keep track of how many rounds that you've made. And then you just keep working 
one single crochet into every stitch around. I finished one round of one single crochet around the half loop. Then I'm going to take and move up the yarn marker and I'm going to make decrease rounds. For the first decrease round you're going to make one single crochet into three stitches and then you're going to make your decrease stitch. And then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. I finished 33 stitches for that round on one loop. Then I'm going to go ahead and move the yarn marker up for another decrease round. For this decrease round you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches and then make your decrease stitch and then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker and then come back. On that round I finished up with 25 stitches then you can go ahead and remove your yarn marker make your slip stitch into the next stitch over then go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the neck onto the dragon. Next, you're going to get your tapestry needle and I have the dragon head upside down. You're going to take the neck and place it right at the base and line it up, line up the neck so that you can sew it. You want to have the neck on the inside portion of the back head of the dragon between the ears and that large triangle. You can see how I've lined up mine and I'm just sewing it in place. This is what mine looks like after I've sewn it onto the head. Then after you've sewn it on the head, then you can take and stuff it. So go ahead and put your craft stuffing on the inside of the neck. Then after you finish stuffing the neck and the body, make sure you stuff the body well. After you finish stuffing both sides, and you can stuff more as you close too if you need to. Then you're going to take and you're just going to sew the neck piece to the head. Just take your tapestry needle, make sure you line up the head how you want it, and then you're just going to take your tapestry needle and you're going to go right into the stitch on the head. And you're going to go all the way around sewing it in place. And I'm just going to go back and forth sewing the stitches together. This is what the neck looks like after I've sewn it on. For the front paw for the dragon, you're going to make it the same way as the body except you're going to stop after one single crochet into three stitches and two single crochet into the fourth stitch. Then you're going to go ahead and move your yarn marker up and you're going to make eight decrease stitches. I'm going to show you the first couple. You go into the first stitch, bring up a loop, go into the second stitch, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a decrease stitch. So you're going to make eight of these. I'm going to show you a second one. Go ahead, finish eight decrease stitches and then come back. 
Then, after you've finished your eight decrease stitches, you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch back to the yarn marker, and then come back. Then, go ahead and move your yarn marker up, and you're going to make only one round of one single crochet into every stitch back to the yarn marker. Then go ahead and move your yarn marker up. You're going to make four decrease stitches. There's two. Three. Four. Then just make one single crochet in every stitch back to the yarn marker. Then go ahead and move your yarn marker up and you're going to make only one single crochet in every stitch around until you've completed 14 rounds. So 14 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. After you finish the 14 rounds of one single crochet into every stitch, you can make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. And then go ahead and finish off and just pull enough yarn through to sew it onto the dragon. You're going to need two of them. Now I'm going to show you how to make the hind legs. They're made the same way as the front legs, except they're going to be slightly larger. So you're going to start the same way, except you're going to increase to one single crochet into four stitches, and then two single crochet into the fifth stitch. And then the paw is made exactly the same way except with the front paw you had 14 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch. You're going to stop after 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 rounds for the hind leg. After you finish your 11 rounds on the hind leg, go ahead and take your yarn marker and move it up. We're going to start our increase rounds you're going to make one single crochet into the first, first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. We're going to make two more increase rounds. Go ahead and move your yarn marker up and then you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch. Then for our last increase round, go ahead and move your yarn marker up and make one single crochet into three stitches and two single crochet into the fourth stitch. This is how my work looks so far. We just finished our increase rounds. Now you're just going to take your yarn marker and move it up. And you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around until you've completed nine rounds. So nine rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. After you finish the nine rounds of one single crochet into every stitch, go ahead and take your yarn marker and move it up for our first decrease round. For the first decrease round, you're going to make one single crochet into three stitches. and then you're going to make your decrease stitch. And repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker and then come back. When I'm almost back to the yarn marker I have a few stitches left. If you have a few stitches left just make one single crochet into each of those stitches. 
Then move your yarn marker up for the next decrease round. You're going to make one single crochet into the next two stitches and then make your decrease stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Now you can go ahead and stuff the leg and you're going to be stuffing it as you close now. Go ahead and move your yarn marker up and make one single crochet into the first stitch and then your decrease stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around. For the next round you're just going to make one single crochet into every stitch around. So one single crochet in every stitch around for one round. Then you're going to make a round of decreased stitches. Now we're almost closed. This is your chance to stuff some more craft stuffing in there if you want. Then you're going to skip a stitch, go into the next stitch over, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch and you're going to do that all the way around until the leg is closed. After you've closed the leg then you can finish off just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. Just take your tapestry needle, put it onto that loose yarn end, Then just go right where you tied your knot and come out anywhere. Then just cut your loose yarn in. And then you just need two of these. Then you're just going to position the arms, the small top arms in place and then sew it with your tapestry needle. Just going in and out along the edges, making sure that when you sew it that it's equal to where you placed the other one. This is where I sewed my arms. You can just kind of see how I placed the arms. And then between my arms I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stitches. For the bottom legs, you're going to use your tapestry needle and the same colored yarn as the body, the main body of the dragon, and then you're just going to position the hind legs, and I position mine right beneath the change in color on the body, and make sure that they're both lined up equally. Then you're just going to go right through with your tapestry needle. Position the tapestry needle where towards the center of the hind leg and then you can see that you're going to go right through the hind leg. Bring enough yarn for burying or tying a knot on the other side. Then you're going to go right through the body next. And you want to come out at the same level. So here I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So from the center of the magic circle on the bottom, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So you want to come up about the same level on the other side. And make sure also that the paw is facing up on the front. And then you're going to go through the same place on the inner part of the thigh of the leg and then come out about the same level on the opposite side.
Then you're going to go right through about a stitch over from where you came out and then go right back through the leg about a stitch over on the inside. Make sure you don't cross the yarn because then you won't be able to pull the yarn through when you pull the legs together. And then on the body you're going to go about a stitch over back through the body and you can see how I'm coming out close to where I went in. And this is just the easiest way that I've found to do it because I like to have the legs sewn on this way. Then you can take and tie a knot and then pull the legs together as snugly as you want. And then I go through twice. So before you tie a knot, get another yarn and do the same thing before tying your knot. So you can see how I'm going through a second time. And I'm just going right near where I went before, making sure I don't cross any of the other yarn. Then I can take all of the strands and just pull and tie knots and make it as snug as I want. Then you can see how the dragon is able to sit. I haven't buried the loose yarn ends yet and we still have the tail to make also. But then to bury the loose yarn ends all you do is just take your tapestry needle put it onto the loose yarn end and you bury it the same way. You just go right in where you tied your knot and then just come out on the other side. Then you can take and cut the loose yarn end. Go ahead and bury all of your loose yarn ends. The wings you're going to make the triangle the same way that you did for the ears, except you're going to start with a chain of 22. That will make it slightly larger, and then you're going to make four of them. And you're going to sew them together the same way that you sewed these together and make the edge of the ears the same way with a different color. For the back scales, I used my sparkle beige colored yarn. Then you just fold over the yarn on itself to form a loop. Put your crochet hook right through the loop and hold the base with your middle finger and thumb. Then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for your slip knot. Then you're going to make a chain of 15. Then you're going to hold that last stitch with your middle finger and thumb. Then you're going to chain three. That's going to count as your first double crochet for the next row. Then you're going to yarn over and make a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook, which was the stitch that you were holding. Bring up a loop. Then yarn over and go through two. Yarn over and go through two for a double crochet. Then you're going to make one double crochet in every stitch back across 
and then come back. After you finish your last double crochet in the last stitch, go ahead and make a chain of three. Then you're going to turn your work and you're going to make a double crochet not in that first stitch that you made your first chain three. You're going to go into the next stitch over. So go into the next stitch over. And you're going to make one double crochet in every stitch back across. And you're going to keep repeating this pattern until you've completed six rows. This is how your work will look after you finish the six rows. One, two, three, four, five, six of one double crochet in every stitch. Go ahead and finish off and leave enough yarn for sewing this into a triangle. So you're going to end up folding it in half to form a triangle. Then, after you've finished folding it into a triangle, you're just going to take your tapestry needle and you're just going to sew the two sides together. So you're going to sew along this side and then you're going to sew along this side. Then you have your scale ready to be sewn on to the dragon. For the smaller scale, you're going to start with the chain of nine. So you're going to make it the same way, except you're going to start with the chain of nine. Then you're going to hold that last stitch, make a chain of three for the next row, and then make your double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook, which is the stitch you're holding, and then you're going to make it the same way that you made the larger. For the smaller scale, you only need four rows of the one double crochet into every stitch. And this is what the smaller scale looks like compared to the larger scale. For the wings, you have the large triangles. I have two of the sparkle beige and then two of the sparkle blue. And then I alternated the colors. Then you're going to sew them, the pieces together, the same way that you sewed the ears. Just take the tips of the triangle and put them together. And then take your tapestry needle and just go in and out. Oops. Oh, the stitch, a stitch on both ends of the triangle. And then you're just going to go in and out. Sewing the two pieces together. And then you're just going to keep sewing all along the length, all the way down. And then you're going to take your next piece and sew all the way down. And then take your last piece and sew that one down until you have the four pieces sewn together for the wing. This is what my wing looks like so far. I have all four of the triangles sewn together. Then I'm going to take one of the sides of the triangle on the wing and I'm going to place my pipe cleaner right along the edge. Line it up with the edge of the wing. Then take your crochet hook, go right into the last stitch on that edge. For now you can put your pipe cleaner aside. You're going to take and loop your yarn, and I'm using my blue sparkle yarn for the edging, just like for the ears. Then you're going to chain one, and 
turn your work over and then go ahead and tie a knot Then you can also keep your loose yarn in to the side because we're going to bury it as we work. Lay your pipe cleaner right on top there on the edge. Then go into the next stitch over. Go behind the pipe cleaner and the loose yarn end. Bring up a loop. Yarn over and go through both for a single crochet. And we're just going to keep going into each stitch across and burying the pipe cleaner with one single crochet. Go ahead and make one single crochet all the way to the end of your second triangle and then come back. This is how my work looks so far. I'm burying the pipe cleaner in place and I have a little bit hanging out right here but that's alright. We're going to secure that later. Just leave that as it is. Now you're going to line up your second pipe cleaner. A little bit's going to hang over on the edge but we'll fold it back when we reach that point. And you can tie your loose yarn ends around the edge of that pipe cleaner to keep it in place. Then you're just going to continue and we're going to continue burying the pipe cleaner and you could even twist the pipe cleaner on itself as we bury it and I'm burying my loose yarn ends as well as I'm working And then you're just going to continue one single crochet in every stitch, burying the pipe cleaners and working all the way to the end on the other side. Now when you reach the end, you can go ahead, measure where the pipe cleaner falls on the end and you can fold it over on itself so that the end is just at the edge of that triangle and then continue burying it making one single crochet in every stitch all the way to the end. Then when you finish the last single crochet on the end go ahead and chain three that will count as your first double crochet for the next row go ahead and turn your work and then we're going to make the edge for the wing. So you're going to make one double crochet into the next three stitches. Then we're going to make one half double crochet into the next 14 stitches, just yarn over, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a half double crochet. Then you're going to make one dub half double crochet into the next total of 14 stitches and then come back. This is how my work looks so far. Now you're going to make one double crochet into the next six stitches. I'm just going to make two of them with you. So one double crochet into a total of six stitches. And then come back. So here you can see that I only have a couple of the stitches of the blue triangle, so I'm going to make one more double crochet 
into the next stitch. And that's how my work looks so far. Then I'm going to make one half double crochet into the next 14 stitches. I'm just going to work a couple of them with you and then come back after you make one half double crochet into 14 stitches. And then you're just going to keep repeating this pattern all the way across to the other side of the wing. So now you're going to make one, six, one double crochet into six stitches and then you're going to make one half double crochet into 14 stitches. And you're just going to keep repeating that pattern all the way to the other side of the wing and then come back. If your work falls to where you only have a couple of double crochets on the new color, you can add another double crochet if you need to before switching to a half double crochet. After you finish your last double crochet, on the end, go ahead and finish off, yarn over and pull enough yarn through for sewing the pipe cleaner in place. Take that long end that you left for sewing and put it onto your tapestry needle. Then you're just going to weave the yarn through and then you're going to bury the pipe cleaner. Just wrap it around the pipe cleaner, burying it. Then you're going to tie a knot and bury your loose yarn end. So you can see how I'm burying it so it won't come out. And then once you're happy with how it looks, then you can go ahead and tie a knot. I'm going to go through a couple of times to make sure I have a secure knot. Then once you have a secure knot, go ahead and bury your loose yarn end. Just weave it through your work. And then cut the loose yarn end. You can see how you can't even tell the pipe cleaner is on the edge. And you're going to do the same thing with the other side. Go ahead and take some yarn and then just bury the other side as well. This is how the wing looks after I'm done burying all the loose yarn ends and with the pipe cleaner completely buried. Then on your wing you can see the area that forms a little bit of a backwards C on the edge that you sewed the triangles together. We're going to take and pinch that C together and then take your tapestry needle with some thread and just sew those stitches together. Make sure you leave enough of a loose yarn end for tying a knot and then you're just going to go in and out and just sew that piece together. 
And this is how it looks after I'm done. To make the tail, you're going to use the same color as the dragon, the main color, and we're going to start with a magic circle. Just drape the yarn across the four fingers, use your thumb to stabilize, wrap the yarn across your two middle fingers and hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then take your crochet hook, go under those two loops around the middle finger, just like we did for the other parts of the dragon. Bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle. Then you're going to take your forefinger and your thumb and just hold the base of those six single crochet and then you're going to close it. If it doesn't close, again remember just let go and pull on the other loop but it's closing. Then take the loose yarn end and pull on that and that will close up the circle. Then just turn your work and you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around for a total of 12 and then come back. This is how your work should look so far. You know how to turn it over and pull on the loose yarn end if you need to close the center of your magic circle. Then go ahead and get your yarn marker. I'm just going to use one of my scraps of yarn and we're going to start between each increase round, you're going to make one, three rounds of one single crochet into every stitch. So before our first increase round, we're just going to make one single crochet into every stitch around for three rounds. So one single crochet in every stitch for three rounds and then come back and I'll, we'll start our first increase round. After you finish three rounds of one single crochet into every stitch, go ahead and move your yarn marker up and we're going to make our first increase round. You're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker and then come back. Then just take and move the yarn marker up and you're going to make three rounds of just one single crochet into every stitch around. After you finish the three rounds of one single crochet into every stitch, go ahead and move your yarn marker up for your next increase round. For the next increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into the next two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch. Then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then you can move your yarn marker up and go ahead and complete three rounds of one single crochet into every stitch. For the next increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the fourth stitch. And repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Now you can keep going the way that we've been working the pattern in the same color, but I want to add a little bit of color to mine just like the body. So I'm going to go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, and then I'm going to get my next color the same as the body. I'm going to get the brown color. I'm going to loop that, chain one, and then I'm going to cut my previous colored yarn and then tie a knot. After you finish the three rounds of one single crochet into every stitch, then again you're going to make your increase round. I joined my sparkly blue color and I'm going to do one, one round of the sparkly blue color. So you're going to also make an increase round. So you'll make one single crochet into four stitches this time 
and then two single crochet into the fifth stitch, repeating that pattern all the way back to the beginning. I'm back to the beginning and I'm going to go ahead and get my yarn marker and place it right where I left off and I'm just going to do one round of one single crochet into every stitch with the same color before switching back to my main color. Now I've switched back to my main color for the dragon and I'm just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around until I've completed eight rounds of one single crochet in every stitch. After you finish your eight rounds of one single crochet into every stitch, then you can go ahead and make your slip stitch, go into the next stitch over, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then you can finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the tail onto the dragon. Then you can go ahead and stuff the tail. Then you can go ahead and position your tail the, where you want it on your dragon. Make sure that when you position the tail on the dragon that your dragon will be able to sit. So test it out and make sure that your dragon can sit upright once you've positioned the tail in place. Then you can sew it along the edge of the tail all the way around with your tapestry needle. Now you're going to take one of the scales that you made, and this is the small one, the small triangle scale, and you're going to take your tapestry needle with the same colored yarn. You're going to take the tapestry needle and go into the corner. So the tip of the scale is going to be facing up, and we're going to sew this portion to the dragon. The first thing you're going to do is if you want to pull the head back up a little bit, we're going to use this top triangle to do that. So you're going to take and sew the tip of the triangle on the head of the dragon to this back scale. If you like the way the head is placed on your dragon, the way it's looking, then you don't need to do this part. You can just sew it directly onto the dragon neck, but if you want to pull the head back a little bit, then you're going to sew the tip of the triangle that's on the top of the dragon's head to the tip of the back scale. Make sure that you leave enough yarn for tying a knot. And burying the loose yarn end. Then you just want to sew it to the tip. Make a couple of stitches onto the tip of that triangle. Just to secure it. Then you can take and pull on the back scale and pull, pull it as much as you want to pull up the head and then you're going to sew the bottom of the scale to the dragon's neck. Make sure that you center it on the neck as you sew it in place. Then you can see how I was able to pull the, tr the head of the dragon up by sewing the scale on that way. And then I like having the loose triangular flap 
on top. So I'm going to make another duplicate of that and then sew that in place. So I made another triangle. This one was the chain of 15 for the top of the head and I'm going to sew it in place. Then I just sewed the triangle right over the top of the head. Now I'm alternating my back scales so that I have the sparkly beige color then I'm going to alternate with the blue and then back with the beige. But if you want to pull the neck back even more you can do that here or you can just sew the scale directly to, in place right down the center of the back of the neck in line with the previous one that you did. But if you want to pull the neck back even more then you take your tapestry needle with the yarn and you're going to hook the beige scale with the tip of your tapestry needle. Just pull the yarn through and then tie a knot Go right back through the tip of the triangle. Make sure that it's secure. You can go through a couple of times and you can even go through the edge there. And then tie a knot. And then once you have a knot tied, then you can pull on the scale. Pull on the scale, pull the neck to where you want it, and then sew the scale in place along the bottom just like you did the previous scale. This is what mine looks like after I've sewn it in place and it helps to lift up the neck of the dragon. Thing you need to do is just sew the wings on. You can see how I sewed the tip of the wing to the dragon. This is how I sewed it onto the dragon. And then I sewed one more scale onto the back and tail. And this is what it looks like. And it's right down the center.